Now to something every single female needs to hear. There's been a rash of toxic shock syndrome cases reported in Wisconsin, the most in more than a decade, and it made their health department say we're launching an investigation. Doctors are saying these latest infections are associated with using tampons. This is serious. Toxic shock can lead to death. But as Jennifer found out, there's a longstanding misconception that even I have had my whole life that wearing a tampon for too long that can kill you. Mm -hmm. Right, Jennifer? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of us. We have all heard that. We've probably been taught that too. But experts say despite trying to protect women's health, that's where that came from. They wanted to do that. Tampons alone do not cause this toxic shock syndrome. As for those cases in Wisconsin, the state's health department says four of the five were associated with super absorbency tampons that teenage girls in fact used. No deaths were reported, but they were hospitalized for some pretty severe symptoms that can include sudden fever, low blood pressure, and even a rash. The last time that there were multiple cases like this was when just two were reported back in 2011. So seeing five cases over the course of a five or six month period um, certainly caught our attention and, um, you know, uh, it, it highlighted, I think, the need for um, some outreach education to this uh, newer generation of, of tampon users. Right, so experts say it's important for adults to talk to teenagers about properly using tampons, but this is a very complicated topic. It's one that has led to mixed messaging and really a deep fear that anyone who menstruates is at risk when that is just not the case. To better explain what leads to toxic shock syndrome, we turn to Purdue University history professor Shara Vostrel, who also writes extensively about what she calls a health crisis that first made news back in the 70s. It just was very frightening to think, wait, this tampon could kill me? She says that link was necessary to help save lives, but simplifying the facts has now led to long-standing misinformation. Why is this so complicated to understand? This is only related to tampon use. That's the first thing that people have to know. The second thing is that it requires a few different components. First, a tampon introduces oxygen into the vagina, which is essentially considered a food source for a particular bacteria that not everyone carries, but it is the second component that can lead to toxic shock. And third, some people haven't yet developed the antibodies to fight against it. Those three things are hard to explain, and it's why more younger people contract it than older people, because their immune systems haven't developed entirely. It's also why doctors still suggest using a low absorbency tampon and changing it up to every six hours and to not wear them overnight. The easiest way, Bostro says, to avoid such a horrible illness outside of non-invasive testing for that bacteria and antibody. Do you think that that's something that should be taught more in depth, say, in school? I think we can teach young children, menstruators, people coming to their first periods uh, about TSS in a biological way. I think that would help. So, Jenna, the good news is toxic shock can be treated with antibiotics, and there are some other treatments, too, that can prevent, say, dehydration and organ failure that can often come along with it. Well, you brought up schools, and it was something that we talked about, especially those of us in the newsroom that have periods, and we remembered not being taught a lot about it. So is this being taught now? It's a good question. So we checked in with the Minnesota Department of Education first, and that does not set very specific curriculums on these topics. So really, it's up to every individual district to decide. St. Paul, for example, telling me tonight it covers this topic during sixth, seventh and eighth grade classes, which is all part of the Human Relations and Reproductive Health Unit. We also checked in with Anoka Hennepin that follows some national standards, Jana, and so that requires health classes in both sixth and 10th grade to cover some of those topics as well. Got it. Does the health department in Wisconsin have any idea what's causing what's going on there right now? That's important, right? Because this really is a rash, a, a huge number of cases that they haven't seen in a long time. Right now, it appears to be a coincidence. There's no evidence that anybody did anything wrong or that any one brand of tampon is unsafe. That's important, too. They reiterated that the risk of uh, of what's happening here is, is all similar, regardless of what brand you use. And just really quick, we also did check in with the Minnesota Department of Health. It says that it has not recorded any unusual number of cases, too. So there's not a connection between states either.
And is there any other way to acquire toxic shock syndrome if you don't use tampons? Good question. Yeah, remember you have to have that certain type of bacteria. So if it's present, there's a chance you can get it. And that has been associated with both surgical wounds and childbirth. So a lot of information here to digest, I think, for all of us. Yeah, I learned more just now than I did in all of middle school. Right. All right, thanks so much.